Hello, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about fixing Blunder's user interface. Now, if there's one complaint you hear over and over and over again about Blunder is, I'd love to learn it, it looks really powerful, I hate the interface. A uh, very common interface, uh, sorry, a very common complaint, but it's not necessarily always fair. Now, one thing that Blunder's interface really isn't is accessible. For people just coming to Blunder, it is a tricky beast to master. There's a lot going on and some of the hotkeys are just insane. Three, four digit combos. Uh, so you gotta press four keys to get something to happen. And some of those keys are very, very common. So today we're gonna look at is two things. First off, someone out there has tried to solve this problem and we're gonna look at that first. And then second, we're gonna quickly look at some of the settings in Blender that you, if you're just coming to it, may actually find that you enjoy using Blender a lot more. So first we're gonna look at an alternative to Blender. And then second, we're gonna look at making Blender probably Probably more accessible to you if you're coming to it from another 3D package. Now, I do want to get this out of the way right away. There's not necessarily think anything wrong with Blender. It just has a different design philosophy. It's a lot like Emacs. You know, a lot of people would like to use an IDE such as Visual Studio. It's very accessible. It's very easy and intuitive to get up and going. But at the same time, if you learn something like Vi or Emacs, the key combinations, once you've mastered them, spent the six months to a year building up the muscle memory, you are going to be blazingly fast. Well, Blender takes a very similar approach. Once you've got it down, a lot of it makes sense. But on the flip side, they also did make some design decisions that were just bonkers. And you know, over time, hopefully they were fixed. So we're gonna look at all of that today. So first off, Let's look at the alternative. You have to think to yourself, okay, Blender is an open source project and the number one complaint about it is the user uh, usability of the uh, user experience. Why has nobody forked it and made a better version? Well, someone has actually. So that's the first thing we're going to look at today. There is a project out there called b4artists.de. That is in B for artists, so appropriately named. And what this is is a fork of Blender that has usability and accessibility in mind. Basically, they have made it more approachable. And really, honestly, they have. If you tried Blender in the past and were put off by the interface, come on back and give um, b for artists a shot. Now, ultimately, this is a fork of Blender. It is pretty much feature compatible with Blender. It's just had a user interface over, like, over top of it. Um, the other thing is they've actually done a really good job of staying current. So the version right now of B for Artists is actually based off Blender 2.79, which is the most current version. And once again, this is still a free and open source project. The source code is available on GitHub. Um, and without further ado, let's jump on in. So this here is B for Artists. The interface, as you can see, has been changed a fair bit. One thing that they've done is they've really changed up the uh, default fonts and colors and such so that the, there's a higher contrast mode going on here. And I do actually say that their default theme is much prettier uh, than Blender. And this, of course, is a matter of opinion, but Blender's washed out gray default theme, it is a little easy to lose things into the background. Uh, this actually, the contrast levels that they've got in their theme uh, really do make a positive difference. Um, now let's look at some of the changes they've made. First and foremost, what you'll see if you come in here and start looking at their tool selection, you'll notice here there are now icons. Same with across the top here. We've got common tasks like importing from FBX or OBJ format, exporting to OBX or OBJ format, uh, quick creation of uh, geometric primitives, etc. So some of your most common tasks, uh, all of your tasks actually have icons now available. So you can see down here, what this does is it cuts down the amount of scrolling you have to do. Now this doesn't have to be the way you work with things. You can actually come in here, uh, where was it? I think it's under display. Um, and you can change back to text if you wish. But you'll notice, see the text, the scroll bar on the left-hand side here? And we'll go back to icons. So it really does cut down on the amount of scrolling you have to do to go through the interface. And it is, in my opinion, a lot quicker to access and work with the icons. And the nice thing is also, if your English is a second language, you're less text heavy with your user interface. So icons are pretty much universal. Um, they've gone beyond that though. So there are the toolbars up here that you can customize. There is the new icons going across the, um, the screen down here, and you'll notice down here, this is a really nice addition, and this should actually be brought into the default Blender branch, is they've created um, shortcuts for toggling between the different camera modes. These are would, would normally be controlled with the um, the number pad for front, et cetera, et cetera, front, side, back, top camera. Um, and then we've also got the toggle between perspective and ortho, um, and align to the selected object. 
quickly and immediately available down there. Those are some of the most commonly done stuff. And in time, you will probably learn to use the hotkeys on that. But having these icons accessible right here is a huge win for someone that is new to Blender uh, development. Now, another thing that they've done is you see up here, They've got these different modes already configured. Now, Blender is infinitely configurable, but it's not always infinitely intuitive to do those configuration changes. So what this is kind of like a preset version of it, and you can customize all this, but as you're going through the different modes, so see, this is the default we're in now. If you need to do animation, they've got it set up. Now, there is a similar functionality in Blender, but this is definitely quicker and more accessible. And I believe Blender 2.9 is going to have a huge overhaul in terms of how this usability works. But for now, this is, in my opinion, a better way to go about it. You need to do UV editing or um, compositing or scripting. So they've got all these pre-configured settings going on. And then we'll go back to the default like so. Now this was controllable like this previously, uh, but this is just kind of a nice pre-configured setup using you know same default. So if you're just learning Blender and you need to go in to do a specific task, it is configured for you and it's quickly accessible and you can jump through each one up here. So that's a nice addition. Now if we come down here over to the settings over here, we already saw one that we can turn the text buttons or icons back and forth here. And another thing they've done is actually given you the ability to hide the 3D cursor. 3D cursor is right there and to be honest, 3D cursor is probably one of the most confusing things to beginners. And the real, honest to God, most confusing thing to beginners is without a doubt right click to select. There is no application in the universe that does not use left click, left click to select except for Blender. Now again, in the next section, we're gonna look at how you can configure Blender to be more sane on this task. But what um, these guys have done is basically made that a default out of the box. So here you can see normal, movability, etc. Well, I can now left click to select it. Um, and that, you know, I guess I'm not really gonna show you that well on video, but left click to select is what your brain is wired to do. So this is a nice change. And this is by far and away, one of the biggest usability mistakes Blender has made. And it's actually been announced that Blender is going to migrate towards left click to select at some point in the future. Uh, so this is a nice change for sure. Another couple things they've done, they've integrated right out of the box, the ability to, um, wireframe, uh, control your wireframe display, which is another thing that I find myself doing quite often. Uh, where did you go? Uh, view? Okay, where did it go? Miscellaneous? Uh, nope. All right, I'm really confused. Um, ah, yeah, that's my mistake. You need to be in edit mode for this. But when you're in edit mode here, uh, there is your object as it stands. I will select nothing. Oh, um, now this is one of the challenges. They've also basically um, changed all the hotkeys out. So the ones I'm used to, like A to select all, is no longer the hotkey that it was. And this is definitely the downside of using a non-standard version is your hotkeys are gonna be a little bit different than what you're used to. But again, there is a nice solution to this and I will show it to you in a second. But with in edit mode here, you'll see that I've also enabled something called wire tools. Uh, right here, and you've got control over how your wireframes are drawn. Like so. All right, not showing me a... So you can toggle between how wireframes are displayed, etc. Now, another nice thing that they've done in here is we come on down to this guy. <coughs> oh, sorry, that's not it. Um, yeah, important hotkeys right here. And what you can do is click show text and you'll see right here in the background, we can actually increase the font size. You can actually have a quick handy, quick overview of what the most popular hotkeys are. Um, so when you're just learning or just starting out, everything you need is right there in the background for you. So you can toggle it on and off. Now, another thing they've done is streamline the, um, actual tool tips that pop up when you mouse over something, which was a point of confusion with the previous version. And really that's kind of what they've done. They've come into Blender and just made it more accessible, more straightforward, more user-friendly, more visual in scope. Um, and you know, to some of the people that initially hated everything about Blender's user interface, this might be a big step towards bringing them into the fold. Now the flip side is of course, if you decide to either follow an existing uh, Blender tutorial, you're going to lose it. You know, you're gonna have to do a bit of a translation in your head between, okay, it says press this key to do something. You're gonna have to do the equivalent here. Um, so that is definitely the downside here. And also 
once you become expert level in Blender, um, you're gonna find that your workflow is faster than you will find with B for Artists. It's sort of like Maya versus Blender. Maya has a more accessible interface, but I imagine at the end of the day, Blender is faster. Due to generally a keyboard workflow is a quicker way to go but it's going to take you a long time to get there. And frankly, if you're not the type of person that's working in Blender every day, like myself, I work with Blender quite a bit, but not on a daily basis, I never really do develop that full muscle memory to really take advantage of what you can do uh, with Blender's keyboard shortcuts and customizability, etc. So this is actually probably a better approach for me. Uh, finally, what they've also done is they've basically created their own help materials. So they have full manuals for uh, the various different pieces and tasks that they do. So that's pretty impressive in a project like this. It's cool that they are documenting all of their own things, but do keep in mind existing tutorials, etc., for Blender are not going to work. But ultimately your workflow is the same. It's how you go about interacting with it that's changed here. So if this is something you know that looks more accessible to you, it looks more interesting to you, I do highly recommend you check out Blend for Artists. Now on the flip side, if you mostly like Blender, but some of the little tweaks and features in there drive you nuts, well, that's what we're gonna quickly look at here today. A couple of things that might make Blender much more approachable for you. Now, uh, first off, if you come from another platform, when you first load up Blender, or if you go to the splash screen like this, you'll notice here there's this interaction option. And this allows you to switch to 3ds max or maya hotkeys so for example maya uses qwerty qwer uh, for tr uh, select translate rotate and scale and that's kind of become sort of a universal most game engines are using that hotkey combo as well so it's becoming just kind of the norm if you wish to switch to that basically if i select this it changes the keyboard mappings to mostly match blender now no, sorry mostly match the maya layout now do be aware though the same consequences come all of your existing tutorials are going to be you know wrong the, the keyboard overlays aren't going to work exactly the way you'd expect them to and in some cases um certain things that are built in for example uh control and then left click is to do an extrude when edit mode. Well, that isn't necessarily gonna work in an alternative setup. But this option definitely exists if you are coming from a different platform. Um, and it's a nice way to transition in. So you can get up and go and use the keyboard shortcuts you are used to, and then gradually switch over to Blender's way of doing things if you wish. So that is an easy way to get things up and going. Now, uh, other options we've got in here mostly involve going into the settings. So go to File, User Preferences, and one of the very first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to the Input tab and switch this, select with left click. This is gonna screw up some tutorials, of course, but it is going to make your experience a lot less infuriating. Uh, point blank, um, the, the right click selection is probably the most confusing decision they made, and it can quickly be turned off, although this, again, is going to break some things. For example, as I mentioned earlier, in edit mode, uh, control plus left click is a quick mode for extrude. I don't think that that works as reliably anymore because you've just you know changed the left click setting or what they call action button setting. Uh, so there are some ramifications, but for the most part, they're very mild. And as I mentioned earlier on, a future version of Blender is going to migrate towards left click. So don't worry about the you know whole muscle memory thing um, being screwed up in your head because every single existing Blender user is going to have to relearn their click settings at some point in the future. So you're not doing yourself a whole lot of damage. Now, another one to be aware of is this emulate number pad. Now, in a world where people were using a full 101 key keyboard, um, everybody had number pads and Blender uses it heavily. So actually, if you go through the, the different directions, um, able, enable you to pan around your scene and quick jump to like top, right, bottom, sorry, top, right, um, uh, perspective, orthogonal, etc. All the different camera settings are toggleable using the number pad, which is very important. And then with a control combination, you can do the opposite. So instead of top, do bottom, etc. So your viewport navigation is very fast if you have a number. The reality is, however, a lot of us now are working on laptops, especially if you're in a 14 or 15 inch model of a laptop, you don't have a number pad. So you wanna switch and uh, emulate numpad on, which basically does is turns your top row of number keys into uh, viewport toggles. So basically it's the same thing, it's just you know not laid out as intuitively if you had a number pad, but it is essential. Those keys are huge for flipping around the scene fast. So if you are on a laptop, you definitely wanna turn that one on. Now another couple options that you might wanna play around with, and this comes down to individual settings and the package you came from, but your orbit style and your zoom style are big deals. These are basically uh, you know how your mouse rotates in the scene like so. And people get used to one way, and there's no 
one right way, uh, but you kind of probably find that um, there's a way that you prefer. So if you find that rotation doesn't work the way you like it in Blender, go back and toggle that setting. Uh, it'll probably make your life easier. Now, next up, we come back. Uh, some down, a couple other tiers down here. You can also change out your zooming style and how you navigate around the world. Again, play with these settings to get it to what feels right for you because it's going to really come down to what you prefer to do. And do be sure to hit the save user settings. Otherwise, any, save, any changes you make will be lost when you close out Blender. Um, another one that's really big is I mentioned earlier on when we first looked at this guy, one of the big things that they've done here is they've made a high contrast theme. So things stand out a lot better in this setup so you can see between the color and the contrast, etc. Then in this, you know, this gray on gray really does blend in badly. But these are actually quite easily controlled. Inside of Blender, you come over here to themes, like so. Drop down this preset here, and you will find there are several different themes here. And you can control the contrast levels quite a bit. So switch between those and try to find one that works for you. Because in all honesty, a lot of people aren't going to like gray on gray. And I get it. I understand it. Personally, if I didn't do a lot of tutorials where people were expecting a Blender to look a certain way, I certainly wouldn't be using gray on gray either. So this is one of those things that you may find Blender much more appealing uh, when it's kind of themed to the way you like. Of course, you've got a huge amount of control over everything you're doing here. So uh, if you want to tweak things down, you definitely can to an infinite degree. But there are predefined themes up here to get you going and you've got quite a bit of um, different options going on as you switch through them so you probably will find a look that you like better and in all honesty I think um, B for artists has the right choice here the default should be a higher contrast um, I, I do think that for example if it shipped with this theme as the default people would think it looked a lot less dated and it is things do have more differentiation and they do pop out a little bit more now the final thing i'm going to show you in here is an add-on and this is going to be for some of you maya users come in here and search for pi and you want to go pi official menu like so just enable that guy and then exit out so now what you'll notice is actually when you're in the user interface if you hit the z key it will pop up a context menu that you can then go off and select. It's a lot like a, a minimized version of the um, kind of spacebar menu in uh, in Maya. And you can actually you know, got a lot more control over it than I'm showing here. You can do a lot more detail. But basically, uh, as I switch mode, so there you can see as I'm hovered over there, we got different options coming up based off of here. So I can switch out to wireframe, etc. So it's a context tentative menu pop up around the mouse cursor. You can control how far out, etc. Uh, but if you really kind of miss your menus dynamic kind of workflow from Blender, do be sure to check out that Pi add on. It will probably make things a lot nicer for you. That's what the extent of what I want to cover today. So if you've been turned off by Blender's user interface, well, it's possible that you can, you know, just customize things. And actually, there's a huge amount of customizability in the out-of-the-box blender and some of their default settings that they went with are a little questionable so i can understand how with a little bit of tweaking you may actually enjoy blender a lot more especially if the first thing you do is change it to left click select now the other thing is if it still isn't doing it for you or if you're just looking at starting with blender but you find it too daunting be sure to check out b for artists it's an impressive project they've made a lot of very logical decisions um, and it is a very much more approachable version of the Blender user interface. And that's all we're going to cover today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please, of course, do click that like. And if you're into this kind of stuff, hit subscribe. And hopefully we'll find more content that you enjoy. All right. See you all later for now. Goodbye.